Hi, my name is Cliff Hastings, and welcome to this presentation of an introduction to Mathematica Online. Today, we are going to discuss how Mathematica Online brings the world's ultimate computation system to the cloud, allowing the power of Mathematica's interactive notebooks to work directly in your web browser. This means that you can use Mathematica from any computer with internet access without needing to install anything. We'll also take a look at how you can share Mathematica Online documents with others, including people who do not have their own Mathematica Online licenses. This makes it very convenient and easy to publish a document for a group of colleagues, students, or collaborators. We'll take a look at how Mathematica on the Desktop can utilize the cloud and discuss some of the benefits to having both Mathematica Desktop and Mathematica Online licenses at your disposal. We'll also look at using Mathematica Online with mobile devices like iPads. Finally, we'll discuss licensing options for getting Mathematica Online access either for yourself or for your organization. So let's go ahead and start by opening up a web browser. We'll navigate to Mathematica Online login screen and enter our account information. When you first launch Mathematica Online, you should see the welcome screen. From here, you can create a new notebook, access resources for getting started, and browse the files stored in your Wolfram Cloud account by using the file browser. If you have a Mathematica Online account, you'll get a certain amount of cloud storage where you can store your notebooks and related files, and you can also purchase additional storage if needed. Let's create a new notebook by clicking Create New Document and selecting Notebook from the drop-down menu. A new tab opens with our blank document uh, notebook. Before we go on, I'm going to collapse the sidebar just to give us a little more space to work with. Now, if you have experience with Mathematica, then parts of this blank notebook document will look very familiar. You'll see a plus sign with a horizontal bar, which is where we can enter input. There are also some menu items in the top of the document, a file menu with operations for duplicating and downloading files, as well as a link to open the current file in Mathematica on the desktop. A format menu, which allows us to change things like cell styles, fonts, colors, and sizes. An insert menu, which is useful for pasting in special characters like Mathematica symbols and operators and a share menu, which we'll discuss in more detail later on. Like Mathematica on the desktop, the horizontal bar means that we are ready to create a new cell, and the plus sign is the Cell Insertion Assistant. We can click on it by bringing up a menu that allows us to choose the type of input we want. For example, if I choose Other Style of Text, and then select Title from the drop-down menu, we can add some text like an introduction to Mathematica Online to start adding content to my document. As in Mathematica on the desktop, I can use my mouse to click above or below existing cells to get the cursor ready for a new input, or I can navigate uh, through them in between the cells by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. Now that I have the cursor at the bottom of my notebook, I'm going to click the Cell Insertion Assistant icon again, and this time I'll choose Freeform Input. This creates a cell with an orange equal sign icon, which means I can now issue a command by typing in plain English, like plot sign x. When finished, I'll press the Shift and Enter keys on my keyboard, which tells Mathematica Online to evaluate my input and return the result, which it does so immediately. What happens in the background is Mathematica Online says, okay, you asked me to plot sine x, so here is a plot of the sine of x. And then it makes some decisions in terms of selecting the domain that the function is plotted over. Freeform input means that anyone can start using Mathematica Online immediately without knowing anything about the underlying Wolfram language that powers Mathematica and other Wolfram products. Freeform input can also be used to look up information. So asking something like, number of turkeys in Turkey will return a result. Mathematica Online can distinguish between the animal turkey and the country turkey and use that information to look up the relevant data and then return the answer to the question. 
You can also use the Wolfram language directly. That is the first option when you click the Cell Insertion Assistant. And it is also the default type of input when you start typing to create a brand new cell. As I start typing a Wolfram language command, like with the letters P-L-O, a pop-up window appears to offer me possible command names. Once I select one, I can press the double chevron icon to see templates of the different ways the command can be used. In this case, I'll select the first template for the plot command, and then I'll type in the rest of the necessary information to plot the sine of x from 0 to 10. And you can use the tab key to jump to the next placeholder, just like you can in Mathematic on the desktop. Interactivity is supported in Mathematica Online, so if I make a 3D plot, I'll use freeform input to ask for a plot of sine of x times cosine of y, and then I can click and drag the plot to rotate it. I can also use the manipulate command to create an interactive model. So let's manipulate the plot of sine of x plus the sine of f times x where x goes from 0 to 4 pi, and f goes from uh, 1 to 5. I can move this slider bar to examine what happens to this plot when f takes on different values. And if I add in a different type of parameter, like adding an option for plot style arrow color, and I make the arrow using the hyphen and greater than symbol, and then I'm going to tell Manipulate that the color uh, should start with red. I get a different type of control, in this case a color selector, to change the appearance of the plot. Now, just like in Mathematic on the desktop, the notebook structure can be organized by moving cells around through cutting or copying and pasting. And the cell contents can be hidden or displayed by double-clicking the appropriate cell brackets. So if I want to show my results, but not my code, I can hide it, like for this last manipulate example I just created. I'm going to create now a new cell and use freeform input to integrate one over the quantity of one minus x cubed. I get a result that has some degree of typesetting displayed. I can even select the output cell bracket, click the gear icon, and choose convert to traditional form to see a result that is more like the mathematics we might see in a textbook. So now that we've built up the document, let's give it a name. The document itself has already been saved to my Wolfram Cloud account. That happens automatically in the background. So it's not something I have to actively think about. But I can give my document a name by clicking on the quote-unquote unnamed at the top of the screen. Uh, and I'll type in the name. I'll call this My First Notebook. And then click on the check mark when finished. I can find this file by opening the sidebar, clicking Home, and then seeing the list of files I currently have stored in my cloud account. So with Mathematic on the desktop, when you want to share a file with someone, you usually send it to them via email or some other method, and then they can open it up in Mathematica or the free CDF player viewing software that can be downloaded from our website. But Mathematica Online makes it much easier to share your documents with someone. At the top of the notebook, you'll see a share menu item. When I click on this, it brings up a menu that lists several ways that notebooks can be shared, including as a private document or a public web page. If I share my notebook as a private document, then I can choose who will be able to access this document. When I select private document, a pop-up window appears, and a message lets us know that this is a private file that can only be accessed by me and my collaborators and viewers. A collaborator is someone who can view and edit the file, and in order to be a collaborator, that person needs to have access to Mathematica Online, either through their own subscription or through a subscription at their organization. Now, a viewer, though, is someone who can view and interact with the file, but they cannot make any changes. A viewer does not need to have a Mathematica Online subscription, although they do need to create a free account in order to be able to view the files that have been shared with them. Adding a collaborator or a viewer is extremely simple. I just select the appropriate option and enter their email addresses. 
For example, if I wanted to share this notebook with multiple collaborators, I can enter a list of email addresses here separated by commas. When you add collaborators to a file, the collaborators do receive an email to let them know that they have now have access to your file, and you can also include a personal message in the email notification if you wish. And of course, adding viewers is a very similar process. You can add as many collaborators as you would like, although, as mentioned, they will need to have their own Mathematica Online subscriptions. You can also add multiple viewers up to the limits provided by your account, and if you need additional viewers, you can upgrade your account uh, to increase those limits. Now, one great benefit of sharing Mathematica Online content with viewers and collaborators is that since Mathematica Online only requires a web browser, you can view those shared documents from mobile devices like iPads. So let me switch over to my iPad, uh, and I'm going to open a file in my cloud account. And from here, I can interact with it through the touch interface on the device. I can scroll through evaluate cells, add or delete cells, and interact with content like the manipulate models. Using Mathematica Online from a standard computer is very good, with an experience that in many ways is identical to using a desktop license of Mathematica. When you access Mathematica Online from a mobile device, some of the functionality is supported, but more functionality and options for accessing Mathematica Online will be available as the product is further developed. So we've seen some of the basics of how to use Mathematica Online and how to share files, but what if you have existing notebooks from your desktop license of Mathematica stored on your desktop that you don't want to have to recreate in Mathematica Online? Well, there are a couple of different ways to move your files from your hard disk to the cloud. In the sidebar of Mathematica Online, there is an upload file icon, and you can use that to open a dialog that allows you to select files to upload to your cloud account. So that's one way to get your files into the cloud. I'm going to upload this file from my desktop called Example Notebook, and now I can open it by selecting it from the file browser in the sidebar. Another way is from Mathematica on the desktop if you have Mathematica 10. So if I switch over to Mathematica on the desktop, I can go to the File menu and choose Save to Wolfram Cloud. This opens up a window that lets you save the file or create a new folder in which to save the file. This is another very convenient way to move your files to the cloud. There are some other features that help you move between platforms as well. For example, if I go back to Mathematica Online and open the file I just uploaded, you may have been wondering what this icon is at the top with the arrow pointing to the computer display. If I click that, the file is downloaded from the cloud to my local hard disk, and then I am prompted to open it up in my desktop instance of Mathematica. If I do that, you can see that I have a copy running on my desktop instance of Mathematica, and it has all of the interactivity and features that the desktop front end provides. So it's pretty easy to go back and forth, to upload files in your cloud account, and then to download them to your local machine. So all of this brings up the question, what would you do with both Mathematica on the desktop and Mathematica online? Well, I think of it as a best of both worlds scenario. The convenience of saving your files to the cloud and having them accessible and backed up from anywhere is really useful. I don't know how many times I've wanted to show something uh, to somebody that I've done in Mathematica, but I wasn't at a machine that had it installed and installing it wasn't really an option. Uh, Mathematica Online completely eliminates that problem. Uh, also, being able to share files online by clicking a few buttons makes it easier than ever before to collaborate with others on projects and to make your work accessible to colleagues or students. This is especially true with mobile devices, um, with Mathematica Online providing an easy way for you to be able to view Mathematica-based content from devices like tablets and phones, which is incredibly useful. But using Mathematica on the desktop still has a lot of its own inherent value, like being able to take advantage of your local machine for parallel computing and using all the niceties of the front-end interface that the desktop interface uh, can provide. 
For example, when I use manipulate objects in Mathematica on the desktop, they are instantly responsive since all of the computation is being done on my local machine. There's no lag between adjustment of the control and the resulting effect on, like, say, a plot. Mathematic on the desktop can also uh, has additional menus and options like two-dimensional typesetting for input and the point-and-click palettes. And of course, with Mathematic on your desktop machine, you are not required to be connected to the internet like you are with Mathematic online, unless you are using internet-specific features like that freeform input I showed earlier. Personally, I've been developing a workflow where I do a lot of my work in Mathematic on the desktop, and then I save and share my files through Mathematica online. And when I'm in a situation where I need Mathematica, but I'm away from my primary machine, I can simply log into my account and continue my work or share files with my coworkers so that they can access them from their mobile devices. If you'd like to get Mathematica online, there are a couple of different options available. There are individual Mathematica online subscriptions available for purchase on our website. But if you already have a desktop license of Mathematica and want Mathematica online, or you are brand new to Wolfram but want to use both Mathematica on the desktop and Mathematica online, then what you'll want to do is get a desktop license with Premier Service Plus. The Premier Service Plus gives you uh, licenses for both, along with other benefits like free upgrades, priority access to technical support, and many other benefits as well. And of course, if your organization already has a site license for Mathematica and wants to add Mathematica online, there are really easy options for doing that also. Okay, well, I think that covers everything for this quick introduction to Mathematica online. Uh, and hopefully, it's given you a sense of its capabilities and how its integration with the desktop version of Mathematica can make your workflow even more convenient. If you are interested in using Mathematic online and want to get some pricing information specific to you or your organization, feel free to send me an email at cliffh at wolfram.com with your Mathematica license number, if you have one, uh, and your organization's name and location, and I'll get you in touch with the right person to discuss those options. Thanks again for attending, and I'm looking forward to the great things you'll create also with Mathematica online.